Hello, welcome back to our channel. Last week we went over all of the steps that we're going to be doing to this dining nook area to make it be charming, sweet, and something like these inspiration pictures. What I'm gonna focus on today is specifically, I'm gonna paint the sides of here and the matching opposite side. And then I'm also gonna just paint these like forward facing cabinets, but I'm not gonna paint the inside. Can't stand painting the inside of furniture. It's too much product. No one's gonna see it. We're gonna be covering this with a skirt anyways, but when it comes to moving the skirt for access, I think that the best choice for me is just to paint these tops in the front. So at least the side, because this is gonna be showing, and then on the front facing parts for when we move the skirt to grab something. Probably not totally necessary for this front part, but it feels like um, a natural step in this process. So I'm gonna do it because I have enough paint to be able to do that. I think I'm gonna cut the foam, especially for this kind of funky corner to get these triangles to match up. And then I do need to still order the foot for the sewing machine. That's gonna help our skirt be gathered for this forward facing part. And the thin foam. So I need glue, half inch foam, and the sewing foot so far off the top of my head. Let's jump into the painting portion of today's video. One thing I didn't really get footage of last week was getting these baseboards removed behind where the bank head is. Max did that for me while I was getting the baby down for bed the other night, so I don't have a lot of footage of it, but I can show you here. It snapped off when we, he was removing it, so he got a special tool from a friend he borrowed that he's going to use to manufacture some of these longer pieces where the bank head is now covering and the baseboard no longer is, he's going to just cut some fresh pieces that are longer and going to um, fit them in here. So this is gonna get fixed, but for now, that's what it looks like. And I'm gonna paint this side and start on the front. I have two different paint color options. Today, I'm gonna be using Fusion Mineral Paint, which is a furniture paint I've used for many years and I have a lot of experience with it. I actually used to teach a furniture painting class with this specific paint, so I'm familiar with it. The colors I have are Chateau and Cashmere. Chateau is a little bit more, um, is a little bit deeper and ever so slightly more towards the green temperature or um, tint. And then Chateau is slightly lighter in color and it is more along the pink tones on the tint scale. So they're practically the same color. I'm considering marrying the colors and mixing them just so that way I have enough, but I'm not sure how necessary it is because the paint goes really far um, and I'm not painting a ton of um, area. Like I don't need a whole lot of coverage. So the most important part are these two sides. I am gonna go ahead and fill in these uh, screw holes though. I think I might have some putty or something I can cover it up with before I paint. So I'm gonna go look through my stash really quick. It's a little bit dried out, but it should still work. I think the layer underneath here is, oh, actually it's, it's pretty um, moldable still. And there's moisture in here still. So I think that, yeah, it's mixing up okay. This is just joint compound, which basically we use to fill walls with. All right, and then just the other side, pretty simple. We're just gonna let that dry and I'm gonna paint the fronts while these dry. And because it's not pink anymore, it's kind of on its way to being dry, so it shouldn't take too long um, for these sides to be ready for paint. And yeah, so on to the next time lapse.
Okay, we ran to Joanne really quick to get some supplies, and now I have the base coat of paint on this. I'll probably do one more layer before I call it done on the painting, and I honestly didn't wait long enough for the holes I filled before I painted over them, but it's fine. It's not that big of a deal. I'll fix it later. So I'm going to Gorilla Glue the foam pieces together. Gorilla glue them to the ply board, and then I got cotton batting that I'm going to staple over all of the foam so it's a little more cohesive and tight, like a seat cushion. All right, this is gonna be a time lapse because it's gonna be a lot of stuff. Hi, I had to pull the camera all the way into my hallway just to get an okay view of this and explain some things I'm doing. So first, I do have one layer of cotton batten on the entire seating area, which is great because I feel like this project's just moving along really well. I'm super grateful for just the time frame feeling so um, nonstop in a really awesome way. I've got the longer one here next to me one thing I was not able to do, because we removed one cubby, we had to make shift our foam from the original to fit this new layout. And when we did that, it's kind of, I wouldn't say impossible, there's better ways to do it and figure it out, but with what I had with my resources, um, I did cut those foam pieces and attach them to each other and then to the ply board which I have clips of, so you've probably already seen that. Now, the cotton batten can only do so much. It's just another layer on top of what you have already existing. So with this piece, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna use the seam on the fabric I'm using to cover these with. I'm gonna use the seam to go right on top of where the foam pieces meet. So that way, rather than feeling like I'm trying to hide the fact that they don't match all the way, I'm going to highlight it and it'll make it almost more seamless, which I'm really excited about. I feel like that was a good light bulb moment to make this project look um, even more customized. And I am still struggling with the fact that this is not a beautiful patterned fabric, but again, $60 to pretty much cover an entire small corner couch is I think a really good price all things considered and I, I think hopefully it'll give it kind of like a worn in French linen look because it's not so perfect. All right so laying this down I'm gonna put the should be right about here and I'm gonna line up the seam. I'll bring you in so you can get a better look at what I'm talking about. And I'm trying to keep, I'm trying to keep as much fabric as possible just in case because I moved this down some. I'm losing about this much fabric, which isn't too bad, but I think I think that's absolutely worth doing with that idea. All right, and then I was curious. I don't think it is, I just don't have enough room in my house to lay this fabric out absolutely all the way. Hold on, maybe I do. OK. 
can this one fit on it as well? Hmm. Technically it fits. However, I you need room. Hmm, this might work. I'm going to start with the seam to make sure that that part does not get messed up because that is kind of my heart and soul of this portion to make sure that this turns out like how it's supposed to. All right, this is where the foam pieces are connecting and this is where I'm going to put this to make it work with it instead of trying to cover it up. It kind of covers up perfectly in that case. All right, I just let this part of the fabric be thick so that way I could get it to pull all right. And it looks okay on this side. Not perfect, but it's gonna be met up with the other piece on top. is because one, um, it's way too easy for them to get off by a quarter inch by doing both at the same time. And then two, I'm not sure how much I'm gonna need for this, so I'd rather keep that for another extra spare piece if I have another use for it than try to ruin two that I may not need both anyways. I have never done a gathering before. I did test it out already and it was so easy to use so I'm super excited about trying this because it's exactly what I was envisioning. Um, I might do one more um, test piece just so I have a hang of remembering like I think this is going to be the front so you want to sew it I think upside down but I'm just going to be I'm just going to double check. So this is my spare piece. So this will be the top is the top. All right, and then for my marker, I'm just going to use this 20. And oh, I'm so excited. Oh, let's do, let's do it right there. Oof, oof, oof. Look at that. It definitely, it got pulled like this is too straight. So that was definitely a little bit of a learning curve. Okay, this is the whole piece laid out. I think that I'm going to actually, I think I am just going to cut this one and try the same exact thing. It's almost the perfect length to be able to do both sides or all of it in just one piece, which would be great. Um, however, uh, I think some sections, like this section is gathered nicely, this one not so much, this part not so much. I really want it to feel really consistent and I think that I was kind of learning it too much while I was doing it, 
but I'm going to try a few test pieces one more time and see if I can get a better rhythm. And then I'm going to try it again with this one. And then I might use this I don't want to have to go through with a seam ripper, but I might have to in order to get it to look right. So actually, you know what? Does it come all undone? I think it does. I could try it again with the same piece. Let's do it. Okay, one more time with this guy. And I didn't have to get a seam ripper. Ha ha! Awesome. All right, round two with the same piece. Okay, let's do it the right way. I don't want to, but... So I can't just start on another one. I think I'm gonna have to do both. Okay. Okay, round two, same piece of fabric really want this to go smoothly. It's just hard with the weight of it. We're not all the way done yet, but we've got majority of it, like 85% of the way done. So what's left to be done is I have 12 inches of ply board left from getting this larger piece cut for the seating that the foam is currently attached to. So this isn't a lot, but I don't need much. I'm gonna cut this down the middle and I'm gonna have six inches on each side, which will fit perfectly right here and will act as like a chair back or the back of a couch almost. And I think it will be a really nice way to tie the whole look in together and make it look less like a bench that goes in the corner and more like a custom piece of furniture. I'm so excited about how the fabric turned out. It was not my first pick. I really wanted something that was more playful and colorful, but still looked refined. If you saw in my last video, I actually ended up picking up three canvas drop cloths from Lowe's and using this as my fabric. It was 20 bucks each. So right now I currently have only $40 worth of fabric on the bench. And this piece I'm gonna to use to cover the top half that will act as the backing on the banquette or corner couch, depending on how you wanna call it. Because we went with more of a neutral tone on the lower half for cost purposes, I am thinking I might change out my curtains or make some pillows in a playful pattern that I really like, which will add that look to the space that I wanted and yet 
a smaller portion rather than the entire bench being made out of that material. It is so sad to know that we need to get a smaller table for this space. The first reason it's sad is because we put so much love and care into it. And I do think it has a very, um, I don't, I just think it doesn't look like the kind of dining table you picked up at your local store. It just feels like it's got character and unique qualities to it. We really love this piece. We sanded it down ourselves, sandblasted the lower half as well, just to make sure we could get all the nooks and crannies, this gorgeous blonde color. Unfortunately, with most banquet seating, you need something that has a round table with a pedestal on the lower half. And because we've got four legs and the cross in the middle, it's making it quite difficult to get in and out of the banquette. Whereas with the pedestal in the middle, it'll be a lot smoother to get in and out. We sat in it last night and we did notice that we do want to add those um, four lights above each window because it felt kind of like you were sitting in the dark and like the table itself was where it was lit up which in a way makes sense, except for when you're seated further back, you're kind of, it's kind of like there's this wall of darkness and then the table in front of you. So that is gonna be something we're looking into as well. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I am so excited about the next part. I'm gonna to try to get all of this done before the next part comes out. And by all of this, I mean, the backing at the very least, and maybe a pillow or maybe some new curtains. We'll see how far I get. Thanks again for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. I'll see you in the next one.